Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and look at some of the new features that were kind of rolled out as part of the spring update for 2016. So last week, Microsoft started rolling out, you know, the 2016 update. Um, and so if you, particularly if you signed up for a trial instance in the last week or so, you may have noticed that the 2016 update has been pushed out to your trial instance. And so I thought it might be a good idea just to kind of walk people through some of kind of the key things that I've noticed. Now, there's a ton of stuff that are coming and will be a part of this. And so obviously over the course of the next several videos, we'll talk about what some of those things are. But let's just talk about some of the, the application stuff that has kind of happened. And one of the major changes that I want to particularly call out in this video is the enhancements and changes to service level agreements. So I'm in kind of my new 2016 instance um, that, that was, has just recently been installed. And one of the first things that you're going to notice is kind of the new learning path or guided tool tour scenario that you'll see kind of over on the right hand side. One of the nice things about this and kind of the way it's built is it's contextual kind of based upon what your role and what your item is. And so based upon what you're doing, it looks at kind of your scenario and then gives you suggestions in order to kind of better do your position. Right now, it's really more used for kind of onboarding type scenarios and getting people up to speed with Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Um, there may be opportunities in the future to, you know, do some customizations with this and really tailor this to your organization. But right now it's very much kind of designed for an onboarding type situation. And so it kind of allows you to see, you know, kind of what it is that you want to do within this situation. So I can type in something like SLA and now it will kind of walk me through some different items. Um, so how do you define service level agreements? Enhance service level agreements and it breaks it down into situations based upon what you're doing as well as other scenarios where it can help kind of find or provide you with kind of guided tutorials. At any point, if you want to bring it up, you can bring it up and then you can go into kind of your, your learning pass. And now you can go ahead and click on a specific item and then it kind of walks you through what to do in that situation. So then it tells you, hey, welcome to opportunities. And then you can kind of start moving through things from there. So this might be a nice opportunity, particularly for newer organizations that are bringing on CRM to kind of play with some of the items and kind of see what's out there. But again, right now, you know, it's really more designed for onboarding. So it has a lot of kind of your basic situations to kind of get people started. Another change that I noticed kind of right off the bat that I was pretty excited about if you go into settings was Interactive Service Hub is now available from the navigation menu. If you remember when 2016 first released, um, the only way you could really get to Interactive Service Hub was you either had to go in through kind of the, the old article functionality and then there was a button that you could click on. Or if you were quick, when it first loaded up, you could hit the experience it now for interactive service hub and it would take you there otherwise if you wanted to have a scenario where people could consistently get to interactive service hub you actually had to go in modify the sitemap and get to that point now they've done that for you so you don't necessarily have to worry about that anymore which has been pretty handy the other thing that they've done from a spring update standpoint is they have now finally kind of made some enhancements to service level agreements. And so service level agreements previously in the past, you could really only use them for case records. So you could go in and modify the information based upon your items. Now you have the capabilities to go in and work with service level agreements for most of your course functionality entities. So account, contact, order, invoice, quote, opportunity, and lead. And then for all of your um, individual kind of activity type entities, you also have the capabilities to go in so you can work with them, you know, for like emails, phones, appointments, so on and so forth. But then you also have the capabilities to use them for custom entities. So that's kind of a, a cool scenario that it allows you to kind of work with now. So let's just show you a little bit on what that process looks like. So I'm just going to real quick go into settings, customizations, and I'm going to go into customize the system. And in order to enable the entity for service level agreements um, or in order to use it, you do have to enable it at an entity level. So you would go into your specific entity that you want to turn it on for, go into the entity definition. And once you go into the F entity definition, you will then see an, op an option in there to enable for SLA. Now it's an option that and unlike some of the other options that are out there, you can turn it off once you enable it if you want to. But I would go in here, I would enable it for SLAs, go ahead and hit save. 
And then at that point, it's ready for me to go ahead and consume as part of my my SLA scenarios. Now, one of the other key things is, you know, the case entity is one of the only entities that still uses and gives you the option for the standard SLAs. Any of the new entities that you enable for SLAs have to use enhanced service level agreements. The other thing to remember is from an organization standpoint, you can have a maximum um, of seven entities in your organization that are enabled for SLAs. So, you know, depending upon what your specific needs are, that is a, a, a limitation that you do need to be somewhat aware of from an application standpoint. Now, the other thing that you're going to notice, and let's just go ahead and close out of here, is if I go into settings and service management, I now have kind of a service configuration settings area. And so this gives me some, some areas specific to SLA. So as an organization, I can go in and either choose to enable or disable SLAs if I want to. I've got my option for applying SLAs after manual overrides, but I also have my options for being able to define pause statuses. Because if you remember with enhanced SLAs, you can pause those based upon different statuses. And so one of the things that it allows you to do at kind of an entity level based upon what entities are enabled you can go ahead, pick the entity, and then you can define what specific statuses would be available for you to pause that SLA when you're working with it. So if you've gone in and de defined kind of some specific status reasons or custom status reasons for different items, you have the capabilities to kind of customize some of that information as you're moving forward. And that can be done per entity as you're creating them. Now, the other thing that you can kind of keep in mind is once you've got your entities defined, now you can go ahead and create your service level agreement. So you can come into here, you can go into new, when you create the service level agreement, it'll ask you uh, what specific entity you want to use. So it'll list all the entities that currently have SLAs enabled for them. So you would define what that entity is, you give it a name. And then OK. And then you've got your same types of situations. So you can kind of decide, you know, when you want this to be applicable by. So any date field type situation that you want to work with, you can define if you want to bring business hours into it based upon what type of entity it is. You can define whether or not you want to allow pausing and resuming. Now, the one thing that you do have to remember, um, if I go ahead and save this, when you create an SLA for a case and you go in to define your SLA details, you already have a lot of KPIs kind of defined within that within that entity. However, when you enable an entity for SLAs, you do not have any SLA K, uh, KPIs defined for that entity by default. So this drop down box is actually going to be empty. So one of the things that you can do here is you can go ahead and define those. And those are just lookup fields to the KPI instance entity. So if I give yeah, now I go back into settings, customizations, customize the system, and I were to expand the contact entity, and I create a new field. Now, in this case, obviously, you know, you would have very specific reasons why you might enable, you know, um, SLAs for the contact entity. I'm just going to do a real generic example from a time perspective, but if I come in here and click on new and I define this as, let's just say respond by Now I'm going to come down here and change my lookup type to or field type to lookup. I'm going to do a lookup on the SLA KPI instance entity. Let it define my relationship. Go ahead, hit save and close. And now I'm going to go ahead, I'll navigate back into my um, into my service management area and I'll open up my kind of KPI that I created for the contact entity. And then you can actually see how I now that I'll have that particular option available. So I'll go ahead and go back into settings, service management. service level agreements, open up that contact SLA. Now when I add my detail, there's that respond by KPI that I just created. So from here, I would go ahead and I would configure my, my SLA um, item just like I would normally configure it. I've got 
my Acapulco win, I've got my success criteria, I've got my success actions, I've got all the individual items that I can work with. One other thing to just kind of note with this, however, is from an organization standpoint, the maximum number of SLA KPIs that you can have per entity is five. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're designing that information. So that's going to do it for our quick little overview and introduction to some of the new features available with Spring Update for 2015, primarily with the guided learning pass, the new availability to access uh, Interactive Service Hub from Navigation, and then the new updates to SLAs. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thank you very much for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.